It's not been a good start for Toyota in 2023. Sales are plummeting and they have a new CEO. Akio Toyota is stepping down as he appoints Koji Sato as the new leader for Toyota. And today we'll talk about not only what's going on behind the scenes with the restructuring of the massive company from Japan, but we're also going to talk about sales of the automotive industry which companies are doing really well, which are struggling like Toyota. And we're going to break down in detail which models of which brands are doing well or not so well. It's going to open a lot of eyes for you guys. If you're excited to see how Koji Sato can change the brand towards electrification and other things as well, make sure to smash the like button. I'm excited because it's a big question mark on what's going to happen to Toyota. We're in this once in a hundred years revolutionary change of the automotive industry from internal combustion to electrification. How he handles it is going to set the pace for Toyota in the era of electrification. All right, so there is some new stuff coming out here. Just keep in mind tomorrow, uh, at the time of this recording, so Friday, April 7th, which is uh, Japan's like a day ahead, so it'll be happening soon, maybe by tonight or so. Uh, we'll get some updates from the first press briefing from Koji Santo as president. What's going on right now is quite startling. After making sweeping changes to its leadership team, Toyota is looking at a factory floor overhaul as it maps out a new dedicated platform for battery electric vehicles. And there are four individual sources confirming this. I don't know which plant this would be at. It could be at the Motomachi plant. It's hard to say. That's where they currently make uh, their ETNG platform vehicles like the BZ4X, Subaru, Solterra, as well as the Lexus RZ. Quick timeout on the Lexus RZ. Lexus and Denso, and, well, also Blue Nexus, they're conglomerate company together. They're producing silicon carbide semiconductors now in the uh, Lexus RZ. It's supposed to help with efficiency and cost. The thing is, it still struggles to get over 200 miles of range with the small wheels. Okay, so back to the lecture at hand. During this press briefing tomorrow, Koji Sato is supposed to confirm the new EV architecture is in the works, but we don't know if the plan's been officially approved by the board. Well, I made a video a while back time how Toyota learned a lot from breaking down the Tesla Model Y. Now, a lot of people were like, Kirk, Toyota screwed if they're just now taking apart a Model Y. Well, even though that was breaking news about them breaking down a Model Y, we don't know exactly when they did it, and we know that they they discovered there are huge differences between early Model Ys and then current Model Ys with the Gigapress. All we know about this new platform is that it's supposed to be debuted in 2026, which is a long time from now in terms of the EV revolution and how fast things move along. And it's supposed to come first in a Lexus vehicle. That's all fine and dandy, but well, Toyota is going to be really far behind on a fully dedicated battery electric platform. And ETNGA was supposed to be this cool like middle ground where they're modifying, uh, I believe it's a Toyota K platform to make battery electric vehicles. But after tearing down the Model Y, they realized that is archaic and outdated and inefficient way of making battery electric vehicles. And ETNGA cannot provide the cost savings Tesla's managed with its massive gigapress casting machines and other manufacturing innovations. And this is the biggest statement out of this article from Reuters that kind of shook me a little bit. Several projects that were supposed to take advantage of the ETNJ platform are now being delayed or canceled. I'll put on the screen for you guys, uh, Akio Toyota, when he came out in 2021, saying, hey, here's a bunch of battery electric vehicles we're working on. But that was all on the old ETNJ platform with an asterisk because Lexus at the time knew that they needed something way more performance and efficient minded with their vehicles coming out in the future. We have heard in the past that ETNGA vehicles were being delayed now that they know that they need a dedicated EV platform. But the fact that they're being canceled at this point is pretty shocking. Also pretty shocking is that Lexus and Toyota want to sell over three and a half million battery electric vehicles by 2030. Here in 2023, they are nowhere near that. In the first quarter of 2023, they sold less than 2,000 battery electric vehicles. General Motors, for example, sold over 20,000 battery electric vehicles, which is hard to compare them to Tesla because they only make battery electric vehicles. But General Motors is a good comparison. They duke it out here in the United States for sales. And GM is making over 10 times the amount of electric vehicles here in early 2023. And I expect that gap actually to widen. 
I just don't have high hopes for Toyota and Lexus, even in the next two to three years to produce a lot of battery electric vehicles at volume, especially now that the ETNJ platform is being possibly shelved. US consumers making the switch to electric vehicles are largely doing so from Toyota and Honda. And here's another worrying concern about Toyota with their electric vehicles. Their suppliers are worried and they're trying to pick up business with other electric vehicle makers or automakers out there because they just don't trust that Toyota is going to be able to float their company with uh, electric vehicle supply orders. So I'll see you guys down below on your thoughts about Toyota. And we'll have a big update in the next 24 hours. I'll try to post it as soon as possible on the channel about what Koji Sato is going to do to revolutionize the Japanese automaker for better or for worse at this point. Anyways, Fleet drives up market gains. We're over automotive news. They're going to break out sales for us. And this is going to be a lot of fun for me as a former salesman. I love watching sales, which companies are doing great, which ones are sinking. And let's just start from alphabetical order here, starting, starting with BMW. BMW is absolutely crushing it. They're up nearly 11%, and they already took the traditional luxury crown uh, last year quite easily in 2022. And here in 2023, they're off to a roaring start, up 11%. Ford Motor Company up 10% as well. Lincoln's kind of floundering. Doesn't really surprise me after driving the black label Navigator. My family liked it. I just, I, it did not feel like a luxury vehicle and it was so expensive. Anyways, up 10%. They seem to be doing well. Buick is one of these outliers going to General Motors here. Buick is up 100% essentially. Don't know what's going on. If you guys understand Buick better than me, let me know. <laughs> I just don't understand that one. Cadillac is up 29%. Phenomenal for Cadillac. I wonder what they're writing on. I mean, I know the Lyric's not selling in big volumes, but like what is, what are the, the, the volume vehicles for Cadillac? Is it XT5, XT6? Chevy up 16% as well. And GMC even doing well. So General Motors kicking butt, taking names, selling either nearly 600,000 vehicles, just about 18% increase from last year. Acura, finally. Acura has been beat to shreds the last couple of years, especially 2022 was really tough for them. They're up nearly 20%, but it's still not where they want to be or where they're used to being. And same thing for Honda. Honda was down about 20% last year as well. They're only up about 5% so far, so they're still reeling, but they've hit rock bottom already. That's the good news. And they're going to be climbing back, getting those sales back, but it's going to be a long time coming. We'll break down Honda today. Uh, in detail with those models. All right, overall, if you include Acura, they're up about 7%. Moving to Genesis, continuing to slay it. 17.5% increase here from last year. Hyundai and Kia absolutely crushing, especially Kia. Kia is going off the deep end right now. They want to be like the premier, uh, the number four EV automaker here in the United States by 2030. They want to deliver 1.6 6 million EVs by 2030 and get 37% of its global volume from fully electric vehicles by then. Uh, they also plan on growing about 30%. They sell about 3 million vehicles. Now they're planning to sell over 4 million vehicles by 2030. So Kia is absolutely crushing it. The new EV9 is right now on display at the New York Auto Show. It should give us uh, about to 300, a little bit less than 300 miles of range is my guess with a rear wheel drive with a large battery pack. And then you can get the dual motor, which is going to give you well over 300 horsepower, should be able to do zero to 60 in around five seconds or so. So this thing is going to be fast. It's going to be accommodating for big families. Think of it as the electric Telluride. And that vehicle sounds like hotcakes for Kia. We'll break down Kia a little bit more later, later, but you can see overall the Koreans are up 19%, kicking butt, taking names, and stealing market share, especially from the Japanese automakers. Uh, let's not, I mean, not worth talking about Jaguar. They're actually up, but that's not saying much. They're not selling very many cars. Uh, skipping back to Mazda here, up 7%, even though they're switching over from the CX-9 to the CX-90. I've heard extraordinarily amazing things about this CX-90. Can't wait to throw my family in it and test it out. Mitsubishi is getting gut punch. We'll break them down today and see why they're doing so poorly. I believe it's mainly because the Eclipse Cross and the Outlander, they're two traditional volume sellers. And even their Outlander Sport, I just think all of them are down in the dumps. But their plug-in hybrid's doing well. Infinity is finally, they hit rock bottom, they're resurging, but 
the damage has been done. A lot of their customers have already left the brand for other other brands. And I honestly don't think it'll be that much longer before Genesis continues to beat them on a, on a monthly and quarterly basis. But as of now, Infinity is pulled back ahead of Genesis. And really what's holding Genesis back is their lack of dedicated dealers that are kind of sold on the side door of a Hyundai dealership. Nissan is smoking it up 16%. Overall, Nissan, Mitsubishi up 12% or about 13%. Polestar is up. Fun to see them grow and hopefully uh, build some vehicles here in the in the United States here fairly soon with the Polestar 3. Rivian Automotive up 425%. I'm seeing quite a few Rivians on the road down here in Naples. Plenty of money to support that Rivian premium price. All right. Alfa Romeo not doing so hot. Uh, maybe the Tonale will come in and help them out. But here's the thing. Why buy the Tonale when you can get the Dodge Hornet that's in my driveway right now for way less money? So definitely stay tuned for my uh, review on the Tonale slash Hornet because it will be coming soon. I'm actually going to review it today, throw my kids uh, in it, and we're going to drive it around a little bit. It's a sporty SUV. It's actually pretty fun to drive. Anyways, there are a lot of pitfalls about it too. Fiat is still being sold in America. That's a small miracle. Jeep down 20%. That's tough to see as that's their big volume seller for Stellantis. And Ram is down 7% as well. Their other big volume seller. So Stellantis overall minus 9% does not look good for them uh, as they move into 2023. But maybe they're trying to I don't, I don't know. It's probably a part supply issues. Subaru of America crushing it up 8%. The Crosstrek continues to grow in sales. Tesla, insane. Over 170,000 battery electric vehicles sold in the first three months. Remember, we talked about General Motors only selling 20,000 in the first three months of 2023. So, wow, there's a big chasm in terms of volume, but... Tesla will continue to grow. And here's the thing. This is up so big because of their massive price drops. The rest of the year, I don't expect them to be up 54%, maybe 30%, something like that. But time will tell. Lexus has finally seen some growth here. Uh, they had several months in a row of declining sales in 2022. And now they're finally seeing... They've, they've hit rock bottom, kind of like Acura and Honda, right? O up is the only way for them. Toyota's having a rough first start for 2023 and we'll break down which models are really effective it's going to surprise you but the big thing here is toyota expected to have a rough start to 2023 and they're expecting to have a better second half better than 2022 second half so i think when it's all said and done toyota might be at a slight positive this year um after the fourth quarter is over but right now they're down about nine percent not looking great so far Audi up 48%, and that is really helping Volkswagen Auto Group be up 20% so far. Volvo is up 16%. That's good to see. They had a pretty rough 2022. And overall, the market is up 8.5% despite inflation, despite interest rates skyrocketing. So we're going to head on over to Toyota here. And we're going to focus mostly on calendar year to date, which is this far column right over here. So Corolla down about 9.5% so far, Super down 21%, GR86 down 37%, and you'll see that uh, the BRZ is not selling in high volumes either. The Mirai down 6 point with fuel cell, whatever. Avalon down 98%, rest in peace. Prius down 45% as they switch over and, re and get the, you know, the, the new model up and running. So I expect this model or this volume to actually exceed i think it's around fifty thousand sales for the prius this year um and then i think that might include the prime so it will be up overall but nowhere near to like the two hundred thousand plus priuses they sold a decade ago uh the camry is actually up seven percent overall their cars for toyota are down five percent let's look at lexus cars is is crushing up, up 20 percent. that's great to see just, i see them everywhere on the streets they're still such a beautiful car Lexus RC, well, I'm, you know, the RC is really only around to float their RC GT3 race car. doesn't sell hardly at all. Uh, the, actually, the LS and the LC are selling more than the RC, and those cost 40, 50 grand more in some cases. So that tells you the, you know, the situation with the RC right now. Uh, Lexus ES down about 14% as, you know, they got, we got about a year or two left before they send the production of that back to Japan from the Kentucky plant where it's been built since 2016, I believe. Lexus LS minus 2% and LC minus 2%. So th these vehicles are kind of at rock bottom here. And if they could produce more LCs, I bet they would be able to sell them, especially the convertibles. Going to Toyota's car, CHR down 82%, rest in peace. RAV4 down 16%. 
This is tough to see here because the RAV4 is so integral for the, the profitability company as well as the uh, just the, hitting the mass market. Corolla Cross, though, is making up for that a little bit here, selling uh, up 42%. So they sold 14,000 units or so. And if you add the 14,000 to the 84,000 of the RAV4, it kind of makes up for that big RAV4 drop, if that makes sense. Venza down 31%. Yikes, uh, the Japanese made Harrier. It's not doing well. Uh, the Highlander down 16%. The Forerunner down 40%. Not sure what's going on there because that vehicle's old as dirt. You wouldn't think they would have microchip shortages. So I think there is something going on at that plant over the, I think that's the Tahara plant over there in Japan. Maybe they're getting ready for the Lexus GX. I think the GX is built there. Maybe they're getting ready for a new uh, Prado as well. So there's a lot of uh, red flags around this production volume dropping. Sequoia is up 900%, mainly because they didn't have it. They, they switched over the new production to an, a whole new plant down in San Antonio from Indiana. So that's why the, that number is off. And then Land Cruiser, they actually still sold three Land Cruisers so far this year. Uh, and they probably sold for a ridiculous amount of money. All right, Sienna down 47%. They're selling half of, of the Siennas that they sold last year. And I think this is similar to what we're seeing with the Forerunner, is that they're getting ready to sell new models out of those plants. And for the Sienna and the Highlander, what's coming out of the Princeton, Indiana plant soon is the Lexus TX as well as the Toyota Grand Highlander. So I think I think that's why these sales are, are down so much as they're shifting pieces around to get ready. But I could be wrong. It could be a battery supply issue. It's just really hard to say. And that's why if you missed, if you missed yesterday's video, the Sienna is selling more on the secondhand market for the Sienna hybrid than the brand new one. It's selling for over $50,000 gently used. Tacoma's actually doing well. I got a Tacoma right now for review. There's a lot of things I don't like about it and I can't wait for the new one, but wait for my review. Uh, the Tundra up 22% and I'm excited. I guess that's good. That's good for the Tundra. And and Lexus crossovers, the Lexus UX is suffering here, minus 12% uh, for their entry-level vehicle. Not sure why it's down so much. Uh, Lexus NX, they're finally getting the parts and supplies and the chips to make these things. Uh, and they're making most of them here in North America. So that is up 54%. And the RZ so far has sold 185 units. Not too shabby. Pretty much every single one has been sold pre-sale and uh, we're going to keep moving Lexus RX minus three percent not terrible as they switched over to a new model this past year so all these sales at the 26,000 were on the previous model last year so they're trying their best to keep that volume up on the new model with a whole bunch more new technology on it Lexus GX down 12 per 12 percent get it while you can because the GX is going to be changing radically in the near future dropping the V8 long live the V8 right Lexus LX Sales are up 181%. They're actually moving a good amount of them. They've sold 1,500 of the new LX so far this year. That's more than I thought. That's way more than the LS and LC. I think a part of it is because it's such a anticipated and highly sought after vehicle around the world uh, based off the Land Cruiser 300 series, but it doesn't make it better than the old one. The old Land Cruiser, the 200 based L uh, LX was better, smoother more luxurious so just watch my review on the new lx 600 f sport if you want to see my full thoughts on it and yes holy smokes if you want to look i'm not going to break this down because we have other brands to go over you want to look at hybrid and battery electric volume going on right here for their vehicles go ahead and do that like i said the venza fully electric not producing at the volume they need the the prius is a far cry away away from the volume that or the demand as well as the sienna just not meeting the demand but look the the highlander Hybrid's actually up. So there must be something funny going on with the Sienna hybrid with either with the production line or, or something to do with parts where they just can't produce enough of them. And the RAV4 hybrid is down 50%. So I'm not sure what's going on with Toyota's hybrids. They're down 11%. If Well, that's all of the electrified vehicles. Their Lexus volume's up 36%. So maybe they're apportioning those batteries for the higher profit Lexus vehicles. That's, that's actually a possibility. So it's interesting. I don't know what to think about it. It's sad to see that any hybrid volume is going down because the demand is so high. And we're going to move on to Honda here. Honda actually finally seeing some positive results 
uh, so far. So let's look at the models that are doing well. We're about well. We have the Type S that will be revealed in about a week from now. So come back in a week, which more than likely you'll be back here anyways for it. But yes, the the Type S for the Integra will be coming out, or at least be revealed soon. I'll be driving it in June. All right, American Honda sales. Let's check this out. Let's go straight to the models here. Accord is up 1.8%. Uh, used Accords are actually selling more than the new Accords, believe it or not. I think it has something to do with the design. Uh, Civic, up 18%. So they've hit rock bottom. They're trying to get back to the volume they're used to selling. And you can see the massive increase here just from the month of March, up 67% now with the new 11th generation Civic. 30 Insight, rest in peace. CRV of 15%. So they're able to hit the volume here with the new CRV. That's great to see. I'm seeing them everywhere in the streets already. So awesome, awesome, awesome. The HRV though, I knew this was going to be a kick in the pants for them. Last year, the new CRV wasn't out yet and they're still able, able to produce the old CRV at mass volume because it didn't have the supply shortages to it. The new one shares a lot with the new Civic and it's still hamstrung by the lack of microchips and other parts. So it's tough to see the HRV go down in sales. I've only seen like maybe one or two of them on the streets down here and it's been out for a while. A uh, Honda Odyssey up 77%. That's because the Sienna can't meet the market demand. Uh, the Carnival can't meet market demand either. And the Odyssey, even though it's long in the tooth and people are moving to the Odyssey uh, for the more the more available vehicle there. So good to see the Odyssey kicking kick butt because they're able to produce those in much higher volumes in competition. Anyways, Passport up 9%, Pilot up 3%, Ridgeline. So their large platform vehicles are doing really well. Even the new, new Pilot seems to not be suffering from the supply shortages, which is quite surprising. All right, let's check out ILX. Let's go to Acura here. ILX, rest in peace. Uh, and Tiger is selling at 7,700 units so far this year. Not too bad, which outsold the old ILX quite a bit compared to last year. All right, uh, let's see. TLX as well is up 25%. So the TLX is getting back to normal, which is great to see. Seen a few Type S's out on the road as well for the TLX. MDX up 12%. This is their volume seller for the brand. The RDX should also be a volume seller, but ever since the pandemic, either people have become disinterested or more than likely, it's a, they're just not able to produce them. So it continues to sink. The RDX has not hit rock bottom yet, which is quite surprising, and they continue to lose sales. The RDX is great for its versatility, has a lot of space. It's pretty sporty. It's fun to drive, but the fuel economy is very underwhelming on it. And then, you know, Acura has no hybrids in their lineup. You got to wait for the fully battery electric vehicles coming soon. Looking at Mazda, best ever sales of the CX-50. Uh, we're looking at best March sales of CX-30 and second best March sales for CX-5. So let's look at what's going on here. Uh, Mazda 3 down 23%. I thought they were going to see some relief, but still year to date down massively. It looks like it's getting better because the month to date is still negative, but it's not as negative as the year to date. Mazda MX-5, okay, it's back in production. Like last year, it kind of disappeared off the face of the earth, but it's up 61%. We talked about the CX-30 having some of the best selling months ever, and it's up 109%. That's awesome for the little compact crossover. CX-5 down 35 or 23%. So far this year, CX-9 up 6% as we get ready for the CX-90. CX-50 up 17,000%. No big deal because it was brand new a year ago. They didn't have any coming out of the factory yet. But uh, 9,764 vehicles to supplement kind of that CX-5 market. MX-30, they've sold uh, 15 of them so far this year. Nothing. Jesus, that's the biggest joke of an electric car I've ever seen. C90... And C9P, I don't know what these cars are. Is this the CX90? And CX90 maybe plug-in hybrid? I think that's what these numbers are. I don't know why it's a typo here, but this has to be what it is. This has to be the CX90 on sale now and the CX90 plug-in hybrid, uh, how they break it down. That would be my guess. Overall, Mazda up about 7%. They're doing well. They're hanging in there. Subaru is seeing the big comeback here, up 8%. Let's zoom in. Uh, you can see the Solterra is actually moving some units here, 1,300. The Ascent is about neutral on the year so far. BRZ about neutral. Remember the GR86 was way, way below, but let's, where's the GR86 selling at? 
It sold 2,000 units so far this year, where the Subaru version is less than half of that. Uh, Crosstrek just absolutely slaying up, up 10%. It continues to break sales records for the brand. Forrester down 3%. That's not good because, well, here's the thing. The Forrester and the Outback used to be the number one sellers for the brand, but now the, the more affordable Crosstrek is doing that. And that, it makes sense because it costs less. Impreza sales are about flatline. Legacy continues to sink. Outback is about flatlined as well. So really, uh, the WRX <laughs> surprisingly is up 1,200%. So the, like, the WRX and the Crosstrek are carrying the brand right now because the rest of the nameplates in there are either neutral or negative. So good to see from Mazda doing well. Mitsubishi suffering massively here. Mirage is down. Outlander Sport is actually up just slightly. Outlander's down big by about three to 4,000 units. The plug-in hybrid's doing well, though. Eclipse Cross is down is less than half of what they're used to selling for the Eclipse Cross. And so overall, Mitsubishi's only sold 20,000 vehicles so far this year. That's roughly the amount of fully battery electric vehicles that General Motors has sold. So Mitsubishi, uh, there's just not a lot of excitement going on in their brand. The Outlander plug-in hybrid is their best vehicle. Uh, and just good luck getting your hands on one of them. They're not exactly cheap either, and you're not going to get an EV tax credit on it either. But uh, go ahead and check out Alex on autos. He has one over on his channel. He's been testing out. Uh, also, side note, Mitsubishi Colt is coming. We don't know if it's coming for America. I think it'll be built in Europe, but this could replace our Mirage here. Future Kirk coming to you. I uh, forgot Nissan here. So let's go over Nissan sales reports. 2023 first quarter sales. It's great to see them up. I know the... Gosh, since the pandemic has been really hard on Nissan, especially Infinity, but they're finally up first quarter, 17%. The big stories Infinity seen, some really if moving those QX 60s more than likely. All right, Versa up 67%, selling only 3,900 units. They need to actually produce more of those in my opinion. Uh, we see the Kia Rio doing pretty well. Uh, Sentra down 17%, while the Corolla is down, while the Civic's down, but the Korean counterparts, the Elantra and the Forte are, are up right now. Ultima down 14%, losing that energy, and we're Maxima, rest in peace. It's the last year of the Maxima. Uh, Leaf is down 46%, even though there's a demand for new Leafs. And N Nissan just needs to make a redesign of Leaf. It's been the same thing forever. Z is only sold 466 units. Going back to Toyota, how many Supras have they sold? Uh, 871. So these things are just extraordinarily low, vo low volume, very niche. GTR sold almost as many Zs. Really, it's not that far off. 143 units. All right, Nissan Kicks. Yikes, minus 42%. We saw a similar vehicle, the Mazda CX-30 doing so well, but the Kicks is just getting kicked in the pants. Uh, Nissan Frontier minus 25%. That's rough to see because the Tacoma is long in the tooth right now. And you could really, this is their time. This is the time for the Frontier to be like, hey, I'm new. I look great. I have a better engine, better transmission. And yeah, they're just not able to produce them. Uh, Nissan Titan down 37% as well. Uh, Nissan Pathfinder, though, holy smokes, up 165%, selling 23,000 units. They could probably make more of those as well. Armada, 342%. I love the Armada. Long live the V8. This thing is fantastic. It's a bargain compared to the identically packaged in some ways, the, the QX80 from Infinity. So Armada, good for the Armada. Long live the V8. Nissan Rogue up 70%, selling 76,000 units. Hold on, where's my calculator? So we'll do 76,000 times four. They're gonna make over 300,000 Rogues this year. That's not too shabby at all. Let's go, I mean, what are the biggest competitors? They have a lot of competitors. I mean, Honda has the, the CRV. So the Rogue is out selling the CRV right now. Going to Toyota, the RAV4. It's getting close to the RAV4. A RAV4 is down big, especially the hybrid. A RAV4 is 84,000. The Rogue's at 76,000. Nissan putting on the heat with the Rogue. The Aria sold 2,800 units this year, which is more than I thought, but it's also less than where they expected to be at the same time. Uh, Nissan Murano is positive 32%. That vehicle, I don't, it's so, it's, it is what it is. Murano's still around. Okay, so let's go to Infinity here. Q50, it's only a few years before they kill this thing. And I think the Q60 will be killed before it. 
QX50 is getting crushed. This should be a volume solve for them down 32%. Yikes, QX55 is up. They have higher profit margins on this vehicle. It looks great, but it's hamstrung by the CVT. QX60, this is why the brand is up so much. Their previous number one seller, and now again, the number one seller, the QX60 up 181%, 7,000 units. It's getting back-ish on track here. QX80, like the Armada, is selling in high volume. So the Armada and the QX80, there must not be any supply constraints here, and they must be able to produce these at a very high volume uh, for the Japanese automakers. So great to see Nissan here, and let's get into the Koreans. The Accent, rest in peace. Uh, so Elantra is up 50%. They're taking some of those Civic sales, and the Corolla sales are just not able to meet the demand. Ionic 5 is down, and you'll see from Kia that the uh, EV6 is down as well. The Ionic 6 has actually sold some volume here so far this year. Check out my driving review on it. I'd still rather have an Ionic 5. Anyways, Kona is uh, up 24% as we get ready for the new Kona to hit the market. Um, we got some information. It's going to have two battery packs, one around 200 miles of range for the Kona EV, and then you'll have one around 270 miles of EV range. Still around about 200 horsepower, which is plenty for this small electric vehicle. Uh, and then you're also going to have an updated turbocharged model for the Kona. No hybrid. No hybrid for America. And that is unfortunate because the Corolla Cross hybrid is coming and is going to be licking its chops because there are no hybrids in the market to compete with the Corolla Cross hybrid. Nexo fuel cell, whatever. Palisade down 7%. That is a big volume seller for them. Santa Cruz is growing though, up 11%. I'm actually surprised by this volume. That is a lot, 9,300 for the Santa Cruz. And a big part of why, why it's doing well, I think, is because uh, the Ford Maverick, they can't meet the demand of that vehicle. And the only comparable vehicle is the Santa Cruz. So I think that's what they're benefiting from. All right, Santa Fe. They're getting new redesigned soon. It's going to be very boxy. Uh, I'm hearing things that it looks a little bit like Defender or a little bit suburban Tahoe. Or maybe Tahoe-ish is a better better word for it. But like pretty cool here at 28,000 vehicles. The Santa Fe is still selling well even though we're, we're up for redesign. Sonata up 87%. Long live the catfish. This is the last year of the catfish before they go to the Unibrow light bar. Uh, there's no doubt the, the Unilight up front looks better than the old Sonata, but it loses all of its character, in my opinion. Uh, better for, be, for better or for, or for worse. Tucson up 16%. This is big. This is a, has to be the best-selling vehicle. Uh, yeah, the Elantra is not that far off, though. Uh, but yeah, the venue also up as well. People want really cheap little hatchback things and the venue fits the bill there. So overall, Hyundai, you know, what do we say they were up? 15% so far in the first quarter. And I expect them to continue to just crush it the rest of the year. So let's go to Kia. This will be the last brand we really break down. Uh, Kia doesn't give us percentages, unfortunately, kind of like Mitsubishi. But yeah, we know that the EV6 is down quite a bit, a couple thousand units. The Rio's up. This is good because the accent was canceled. So, you know, Kia could benefit from this small entry level vehicle uh, having that little niche in the market. The Forte is up as well. We saw the Elantra doing well. No surprise. I just saw Forte this morning. Uh, Kia K5 is down a little bit while the Sonata surges ahead. But let's take a look 14,000 units for. Uh, the K5, and we have about 14,000 units for the Sonata. So they are about on par here. Kia Stinger, rest in peace. It's still selling. I don't know how much longer, but it's not looking good for the Stinger. Uh, Kia Soul, again, cheap little hatchbacks, kind of like the Hyundai Venue. It's actually positive here. Kia Nero is about neutral, um, and that's good with the new redesign. They're actually a little bit positive here. New redesign, I, I really, really liked it. I don't know if I could recommend the. It gets really expensive, I'll just say that, and the dog's barking at me, so i got to finish this list. Kia Sportage is crushing it, 31,000 units. Not quite as much as the Tucson, which would be the equivalent from the Hyundai lineup, but very impressive. The Sportage is going from a granny car to a mass market uh, tasty snack. All right. Kia Sorento doing well. Sorento, the three row crossover, kind of like the Santa Fe. Uh, well, the Santa Fe doesn't have the third row, but they're the same size. So 28,000 for the Santa Fe and about 20,000 for the Sorento. We have the Telluride selling at a positive here where the, uh, Palisade, I think was about neutral. So they're up about five grand here on the Telluride and the Carnival is doing really, really well. It's selling really well in the secondhand market, but here it is selling, uh, 3,000 more than last year so far. So the Koreans are crushing it. 
I got into there. This is a really long video talking, first starting with Toyota's revolution as a brand. And it's going to be fun to see in the next day or so what Koji Sato reveals to us in their plan because this is important for the direction of Toyota. Like this is so important. I, all, all I can say is it's just important. I said a hundred times, like I'm, I'm a broken record. All right. And I'll see you guys down below. I got to cut myself off. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys soon with the news updates from the press briefing from Koji Sato and his new team uh, taking the reins from Akio Toyota for the legendary Japanese auto brand. Have a great day and peace.